SMT Nation, we back. Nation, one of the things that comes up a lot in earnings conferences and uh, the investor conferences for all the carriers, and especially for the carriers that have fixed wireless access for sale, which now is Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile. The question is always this. How are you going to address the network capacity needs? You got 5G home internet customers and mobile customers. How do you build a network that can handle the load on all of those different use cases? Well, Verizon's Joe Russo, who is their network chief, right, president of Global Networks and Technology, spoke on this today at a conference. Let's cover some of the highlights from his commentary. The link for the article from Linda Hardesty Fierce Wireless will be in the description. And of course, ways to show your support for the channel can be found in the description as well. All right, so he's talking. How do they deal with the capacity needs of a multi-purpose network with lots of mobile usage and now additionally home broadband usage? Joe Russo made it very clear. They, just like T-Mobile, manage the network capacity on a sector-by-sector -sector basis. So what they do is they evaluate and assess the capacity needs of the network based on usage patterns, based on usage profiles, right? How many folks are on a sector, right? And remember, there's usually about three sectors on a tower site, right? So there's going to be different loads on each of those sectors at any given moment in time. So they've got these different types of sophisticated models, according to him, in which they maximize spectral efficiencies and they're constantly evaluating the radio access network, right? And you know, you, you look at the usage patterns and you make those evaluations. One of the things that we have learned, and he mentioned it in this commentary as well, is that different RF conditions at different times, right? Fixed wireless access peak usage is at a different time than peak usage of mobile users. So they're able to, you know, identify those patterns, allocate resources to the needs of all the customers. Now, additionally, the important part here is because Verizon reiterated that they are targeting up to 400,000 net ads per quarter of fixed wireless access subs. Well, we can do math, people. You're talking about 1 to 1.5 million customers per year. Right? We're talking about quarterly at 350 to 400,000. It's nothing to sneeze at. Those customers are going to use anywhere between 500 gigs of data to a full terabyte of data. And they're unlimited based usage patterns. So they're going to have to have those sophisticated systems and models to manage the network as needed. Now, the nice thing is, is Verizon is trying to scale the 10 gig fiber backhaul circuits as best and as quickly as they can. They're also upgrading and building new tower sites, right? So upgrading pre-existing, adding new ones, putting their C-band on air, putting their CBRS assets to work, you know, doing the full modernization process. Now, he also spoke to the C-band situation. He said, we got 230 million pops today. And they are expecting to blow past 250 million pops in the next couple of quarters. To me, I think that means probably end of Q1 for 2024. So think around like March or April. Uh, because they they announced 230 previously. I mean, they could be at 240 by the end of the year. And then an additional 10 million pops by February or something. Who knows? But the pops are going to be harder to come by because... Most of the pops in the country are in the top markets that they've already covered. But he did mention this. He mentioned that they started in the metro areas, the top 46 PAs, and they moved on to the next 76. And now that they've got access to all of their spectrum across the entire country, 406 PAs, they can now really focus on densifying the upgrades in suburban and rural areas. So that's good news for the folks out there who don't live in a top 50 market, right? You don't live in a New York or you know, a, a Philadelphia or a Washington, D.C. Now, the thing that I think is most important to consider here is the depth of the 5G ultra wideband build. He said that it is going to be the primary focus of their capital dollars, and he doesn't feel the need to further densify beyond what they already have. So you can imagine that he feels confident that the grid is ready and it is mostly in place for what they need to accomplish. There might still be some coverage gaps. So you'll see them sprinkle in some, some coverage-based needs with small cells and more macros. And you'll also see them continue to build out millimeter wave. I'm sure it's not going to be to the pace it was the first couple of years, but you know, could they build an additional 10,000 small cells with millimeter wave in tow and in there? Uh, I think that's 
very possible. You know, and they feel good about what Millimeter Wave is able to do for them. You know, he spoke to the concert venue. You know, Taylor Swifties, you know, want to be out there and live streaming their experience. And this is something we've talked about that T-Mobile and AT&T need to do more of. Verizon will be the network for those types of things. So if you're a content creator or you like to stream during these events for, you know, whatever the reasons may be, Millimeter Wave allows you to use your phone, use your smart devices, your connected devices, as you normally would any other time, any other place. So these are some really important and telling statements about the direction of the Verizon network and what the network chief is telling us here. They are going to densify the network. You're going to see C-band ubiquitous across the country through the rest of next year. And I really like what he said when he spoke to the depth of the build. He said customers are going to feel and notice the difference in our network in places that are getting the additional 5G ultra wideband coverage. So this is really exciting. I know a lot of folks outside of the major PEAs have said that, you know, the 5G ultra wideband build outs have been, you know, they, they've, they've been in spots, right? They haven't completely densified, but I think that's all going to change by the end of next year. What does it sound like to you guys? Sound off in the comment section below. You are the voice of the people, the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard.